Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to forge a tomahawk or axe from a hammerhead. The reason I say tomahawk or axe is because I'm not really sure what to call this because it's quite small to be an axe and it's really bad at throwing so it can't really be a tomahawk either. So I don't know, it's just a small axe. This is the sort of axe that I'd imagine being useful for bushcraft and camping or survival and things like that since it's quite small and quite easy to carry with you and I think if I made a sheath it will be really good for taking camping to chop up firewood. However, this isn't the type of tomahawk that you'd want to use for sort of throwing at things because it's not very good at sticking in. I tried it and I didn't even bother to include it in the video since it's just not great. The angles of the blade and the spike on the back aren't right. And also, it's not very good at chopping heavy logs since it's just not a very heavy axe. So I started making this project almost two years ago and it's sort of once I'd finished forging out, I never actually finished it until recently. So originally I wasn't actually planning on making a video, so I only filmed a very small part of it on my mobile phone for the very start of it, but then later on I decided it would make a good video. So apologies for the very start of it not being very well documented. I may revisit this project sometime and if I do there'll be a link in the description down below. So the first step is to find your hammerhead and it's actually quite important picking the right hammerhead. You want to pick one that's large enough and since this is my very first tomahawk that I was going to forge out from a hammerhead I decided to use quite a small one and this one's only 30 ounces which in relative terms is quite small and it's a claw hammer but ideally you'd want to use a ball peen hammer but I just used it from a scrap hammer that I found on a friend's farm that wasn't being used. This is quite an old tool and you can see that it's made from hardened steel as it was very hard and a file wouldn't be able to cut into it so it's very high carbon steel. It was first annealed in a homemade coal forge by bringing it up to the curie temperature above red hot and then letting it cool down slowly. Then I started to forge out the blade. That was forged from the impact side of the hammer which is the bit that drives in the nails and I just did that on another hammerhead using that as an anvil. I then flattened out the claw into one spike and actually got it up to forge welding temperature and hammered them together and I think that they forge welded quite well together, the two different claws, to form one long spike. This is what the hammerhead looks like after forging. I did a little bit of rough cleanup, but nothing much on this side. For the cleanup and general shaping of the tomahawk blade, I was using a angle grinder. So now with I'm going to use a rasp to thin down the end so that I can fit the hammerhead over it. The angle grinder can't reach into all of the different corners of the axe, so for some of these corners, I was using metal files. So this is what it looks like after the final profiling and I'm quite happy with the overall shape and it looks nice and sharp. I then did a little bit of light sanding just using some 200 grit emery paper to get rid of any deep scratches. Now it's time to heat treat the tomahawk and again I'm going to be doing this in a homemade coal or charcoal powered forge but this forge that I'm using in this video now is a much more updated forge that I made much more recently and there'll actually be a tutorial on it coming out very soon because it's a forge that I made especially for blacksmithing from a baking tray. Before heat treating however the tomahawk needs to be normalised. This is going to relieve all of the stress in the steel created by the forging process and hopefully prevent it from cracking when it's quenched and rapidly cooled in the heat treating process. To do this it's actually the exact same as annealing, you just heat it up until it's glowing and then you let it cool down very slowly. Once cooled the steel will be much softer and hopefully will be relieved from all of the stresses and cracks that may have built up while forging it. Now it's actually time to heat treat the tomahawk and I'm going to be doing this in two parts. First I'm going to do the back half, the spiky point part, and then I'm going to do the blade. And this is going to hopefully leave the middle of the tomahawk nice and soft so that I have much less chance of cracking it. So first the spine is buried deep in the coals and heated up until it's non-magnetic. It gets to a certain temperature where the metal becomes so hot that it won't stick to a magnet anymore, then it can be quen quenched in motor oil. As the steel is rapidly cooled in the motor oil, it suddenly becomes very hard, and this is heat treatment. This makes the steel much better at holding an edge and much harder, which is exactly what we want for an axe. It would have probably been a good idea to not use a plastic container and use something a bit more substantial. As you can see here, after the heat treatment, a file skates completely over the entire spine of the tomahawk, meaning that it's fully hardened. If a file doesn't skate over it, then you need to reharden it. I then heated up the actual blade of the tomahawk again using the same method and quenched it in motor oil rapidly cooling it. I tried to make sure that I kept the spine of the tomahawk that I previously heat treated as cool as possible, but inevitably it's going to get a little bit warm and still lose some of its hardness. I didn't actually temper this tomahawk because what I did was, after the heat treatment of the blade, the actual tomahawk itself was very very hot still, so I then just left that in the air without quenching it and it just cooled down naturally itself for the final couple of hundred degrees and I think that that tempered it fine. This is what the tomahawk looks like after hardening and as you can hear from the different noises that the file makes, it's very hard on the blade and nice and soft where the handle is. I 
I then sanded off all of the scale and oxide that are built up from heat treatment. I used a belt sander for this and I wasn't too worried about the steel overheating since it's quite a large piece of steel but I still had to be careful to make sure that the steel didn't get too hot as to ruin the heat treat. I also decided to use some sanding drums for my drill and they worked quite well at removing and leaving quite a nice surface finish. So this is what the axe blade looks like once I've finished getting rid of all of the scale and I quite like the finish that is left on by the belt sander and the sanding drum so I think I'm going to leave it like this. I'm not going to polish up any further and I could go all the way up to mirror finish but the problem with that is this is meant to be a functional tool and if I did ever use it when it was a mirror finish it'd probably scratch quite easily and look rubbish whereas where I just leave it with a finish like this if it gets scratches they sort of blend into it and I quite like it. Now I've got to make a handle for it. So this is going to be the handle that I'm going to use. This is just a hickory handle that I bought from the hardware store for £5. And it's solid hickory so it should be very strong. And it's obviously much too large so I'm going to chop it off about here. And then shorten it so that I can fit the head over it. The rasp that I'm using for this is a ferrous rasp and it's really big and it pretty much eats through this hardwood. I then began to force the hammerhead onto the axe handle and this is really hard fit, it's really hard to hammer it on but it's really good because it means that it's not going to come off easily and there's going to be a lot less wobble. Once the top of the handle was as far into the hammerhead as I needed it then I could start to shape some of the handle to make it much more comfortable. Again I was using the ferrous rasp for this. I basically just gave it some curves to make it look a little less chunky and also to make it fit into my hand a little better. I then used a smaller half round rasp to round all of the curves and make all of the edges nice and smooth so that there's no sharp edges. I then moved on to some 120 grit and 200 grit glass paper to smooth off the handle and make it really nice and that's as far as I'm going to sand it. After that I gave the entire hickory handle a good coat of boiled linseed oil which is going to help protect it from water damage and also bring out the grain and make it look nice. Then using an angle grinder with a thin cut off wheel and some 3mm sheet hardened steel I created a small wedge which I'm going to hammer into the top of the handle and I created a slot in the wedge to hammer in a cross wedge. The wedge has sort of a blade on the front and when I hammer it into the handle it's going to expand the handle inside the hammerhead making sure that it's locked on there solidly. As you can see I made a small slot in the wedge and I can hammer in another 3mm wedge at 90 degrees to it which is going to expand it in the other direction and completely lock the handle onto the axe. It looked a little bit rubbish on the top and there were quite a few hammer dents on the actual axe itself where I missed so I went onto the belt sander to smooth everything up. After that it looked a lot better and I could move on to sharpening the axe up and I first did that with a little handheld knife sharpener. I then moved on to an MDF power stropping wheel for my bench grinder and this probably isn't necessary since as soon as I use the axe any edge that this gives it is just going to get removed since this gives it a really razor sharp edge. After that it has no problems just carving wood by hand just like you would with a pen knife or something like that. There's a small annoying tree in my garden that needed chopping down so I thought that would be a good test for the axe and it actually made really quick work of it and I got through the thickest bit of the trunk which was probably about 20 centimeters in diameter in only a couple of minutes. After that it was also a really useful tool to just remove all of the small branches from each other so that I could take them down the garden and put them on the bonfire. After chopping down this tree the, actually, the edge actually held up surprisingly well and it was still quite sharp afterwards. I wouldn't say that this axe is the most useful axe and it's probably not very good for splitting logs since it's not got much weight behind it but for just chopping down small trees and cutting small branches it's good for things like that and I think it would be quite a good bushcraft axe, axe since it's not very heavy and it wouldn't be that bad to take with you but for splitting and things like that it's not the best. So thanks for watching guys, I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and if you did please hit the like button down below and subscribe. Again, sorry that this video has taken so long to come out, I've got a lot of work on at the moment. And in about a month or two I've got my GCSEs so I should probably start revising for those so I won't be able to do any videos probably until after those, maybe I'll get out a couple just before. And once they're done though I'll have summer holidays and I've got loads of videos planned for then.